What's up you guys, it's Tyler from The Harringtons, and we're back today with a brand new video. And today we're doing another editing tutorial, we're going to be in Premiere Pro, talking all about the Lumetri color panel. Now, if you know anything about color correcting or color grading in video, you know that for a really long time it was really daunting and just honestly really difficult. There were whole programs specifically dedicated just to color correcting and color grading, and it was just kind of tough to learn and tough to master. Well, a few years ago, Adobe announced the Lumetri color panel, which changed the game forever. Basically, it uses the same similar slider system that you'll find in something like Lightroom or Adobe Camera Raw to do all of your adjustments that way and just makes everything in one compact place and super easy to use. So today I'm going to show you my process for how I use the Lumetri color panel in Premiere Pro and just some of the tips and tricks that I've found using it and how I think it'll help you. So let's jump into the computer and we'll get started. All right, so here we are. We're in Premiere Pro CC 2017, and we are in the color panel that I like to use for editing. So basically what I have in this is I have my uh, Lumetriscopes up here, which shows me all the different color information in my brightness information for my image. And then over here we have the Lumetri color panel. Now to go through this really quickly, it's pretty easy. Basically you just have all these different tabs that you can use. Um, and the main ones we're gonna focus on today are the basic correction, the creative tab, the curves tab, and the color wheel, uh, which I guess seems like a lot of them, but you'll see that it's pretty, pretty easy. So um, we have this image right here that I shot yesterday during an interview, and I just wanna use this because I have two consecutive images and I think that we can kind of push this pretty far. So this was shot on a Canon C100 uh, in wide dynamic range profile, and it was lit with a big softbox right here, which is a Spiderlite TD6. Uh, there's a hair light on her. And yeah, I think that this image looks really good. And it's just a good image, I think, to color grade because we have a lot of uh, different tone tone variants. And I think it's just a good image to, to work with here. So uh, here's what I got from, this is the final grade that I have. And here's where we started. So we're just gonna kind of go through the whole process that I used to get to this final grade right here. So you can see the difference between these two. Pretty significant, but we're gonna walk it through step by step. So the first thing I wanna try and do is get the color balance, the white balance to be correct. You can see that it's a little bit like green and kind of yellowy, and I just don't really love the way that it works or that it's looking. So what we can do is we have the little white balance selector here. This isn't always the best way to do it, but I like to use this as a place to start. Uh, the eye, if you can get the whites of the eye, is usually a pretty good place to do that. So you can see what it did here is it lowered my temperature and it increased my tint a little bit. So that's definitely looking better. Um, I would prefer a little warmer, so I'm just gonna kind of bring some of the warmth back in. Um, but all in all, I think that's looking pretty good as a pretty good place to start. Um, so now this Lumetri scoop over here, a really basic explanation is that zero down here would be pure black, 100 up here would be pure white, and then you have all the different tonal ranges in between. So this area right here, uh, basically is obviously her face and kind of where uh, this is. You can see that there's a spike up here and we're getting pretty close to 90, but this is a pretty well exposed image. And then obviously we have darker areas kind of around her. So from an exposure standpoint, I would say that this is pretty spot on. So we don't need to do anything with that. Um, by increasing the contrast, we're going to raise our blacks a little bit and we're also going to uh, lower our blacks and raise our whites. So we add a little bit of contrast in a little bit of black and we're just gonna pull down on those blacks a little bit more, but we're actually gonna come back to that. So all in all, I'm pretty happy with that as far as like an actual color correction, um, but we're gonna kinda, we're gonna push it a little further. So what I like to do, and I like to go for a more like film cinematic kind of look. So I've been really using this faded film slider right here a lot. So what I'll do is I'll take it and I'll draw it over to around 50. And for this one, I actually was pushing it even a little bit further. So. Um, well, you can see what it's doing uh, over here in the scopes area is that it's actually just raising the blacks. So you're removing a lot of that pure black. Um, and it's also pushing the midtones up just a little bit. So, um, you know, going from here to here, we're getting rid of those pure blacks. But I, what I do is I'll push that up and then I'll kind of come back and I'll crush the blacks back down even a little bit further. So, which seems kind of repetitive, but... I just like the way that it affects the midtones and it just makes it a little bit more of this creamy kind of black as opposed to a pure, pure jet black. And I think it just gives it a nice filmic look. So uh, I like to add sharpening for all of my, oops, a lot of my shots here, uh, not that much. I usually go right around 12, I think is a good amount for the C100. This will kind of vary based on your camera and your lens and things like that. And then saturation, I usually put up to about 102. Okay, so now now that we've done all this, we're starting to look a little bit off on our 
color, but that's okay, because what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in here to curves to change that. So we're gonna click on the green. So basically you can adjust these specific channels. So um, I think there's too much green in this image, so I'm gonna make a point here in the middle, and I'm just gonna pull the green down all across the whole, all across the board there. There, so I think that looks good. We're not necessarily going for a pure white, like pure lifelike image. I'm going for a little bit moodier, contrasty kind of image. So all in all, you could probably stop right here and I think you'd be pretty happy with the results. I think that that's a pretty cool looking image. Um, the last thing that you can come in here and do if you want to push it even further is uh, messing with the color wheel, which is you're gonna add a little bit of this color here to the shadows, the midtones, in the highlights. So in the shadows, and honestly for this, it's a little bit of a playing around kind of game. So I kind of like to add a little bit of magenta here, and then usually you want to go to the opposite side of the color wheel for uh, for the uh, for the next one. So shadows, I'm pushing a little bit into the magentas and the blues, which you can kind of see reflected here. So for the midtones, I'm going to push it a little bit um, into the blues as well. Let's see, we want to make sure we get a good natural looking skin tone here. So that's pretty good. We don't need to push that too far. And then with the highlights, we want to add, I'm going to add a little bit of blue in just to, let's see. I'm sure there's people out there screaming at me because there's probably a better way to do this. But for me, it's really just kind of like playing around and figuring out what kind of looks the best. So I think that right there looks pretty good. So you see we made very small changes, nothing major, but if I turn this on and off, you can see that we went from this to this, which I think, again, is just a pretty a pretty cool look. So if I switch these, let's see, here's what I had originally versus what we have now. They are, they're pretty similar. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm pretty happy with that. So. Yeah, so you can see here that I've just through using a few little tweaks, uh, doing a few small little changes in here um, with these very easy to use sliders and all that kind of stuff, we're able to get a really cool cinematic look for this uh, interview setup here. And I think that it looks really awesome. And it wasn't that complicated. So, all right, so let's move into a more wedding, kind of real life example using natural light. The last example was a good artificial light example. And I used that one as the first demonstration just to kind of show all of the different things that Lumetri can do and show kind of how far you can push an image. Um, for this, I'm just going to take this image, which I think is really great right out of camera. And most people honestly could probably leave and you wouldn't be able to tell a difference and just take it from good to great. So that's what we're gonna try and do here. So if we're looking at this image here, I consider this kind of like a best case scenario for weddings. Um, it's golden hour, so the light is perfect at their backlit. Um, and if you look over here, you can see that we are well exposed, everything looks good. Um, we're living right in between this like 70, 30 range, which is right where I wanna be. We're losing a little bit up here um, in the sky. You can see that we're kind of peaking up here uh, above 100, but I'm totally okay with that. Their skin tones look really, really great. So we're gonna take this image and we're gonna do a few small little tweaks to get it to go from good to great. So in, just background on this image, this is shot with a C100, I believe with a 50 millimeter 1.2, again, using the wide DR color profile. And um, I do use a custom white balance shift in camera that I push towards magenta a teeny bit. I just kind of like the way that looks. So anyway, um, as far as white balance goes, I'd say that this is pretty spot on. I'm not gonna even mess with that at all. So we're gonna, first we're gonna start here with contrast and we're going to add in just a little bit of contrast, uh, about 20 here. And then this is kind of where I'd say the magic happens. So we're gonna take our whites and we're gonna push these um, to the right. So basically what we're doing is we're, we're lifting the, the whites and you can see that their skin tones are starting to kind of pop and get that nice like shine and glow and they're starting to look really nice and glowy. Uh, the blacks we're gonna pull the opposite direction. Basically this is the same thing that contrast does but we have a little bit more control. So I'm gonna pull this down um, so that our blacks come down a little bit closer to 20. There's not a pure pure black in this image but all in all I think that looks pretty good. Um, under creative, we can add a little bit of saturation. A little bit goes a long way. I don't go higher than 102. Um, that's just sort of where I like to live. And then sharpness, we're gonna add maybe 10. Okay, so all in all, I think that this right here looks really great. You can see that their skin tones are popping. You know, there's really good contrast in this image. And I, all in all, I think this looks really great. So if we kind of go back and forth between um, toggling this on and off, so this is without the color panel without any Lumetri, this is raw. 
and then this is width. So with just these slight little changes, just in the basic color correction, we didn't get into curves, we didn't get into really anything else, we're able to make this look really nice. And you can kind of dial this up and down kind of depending on your uh, on your preference. So for weddings, this is exactly what I would do minus a few little things. So normally what I actually do is I have an adjustment layer that I lay down on top of my entire timeline. And I think this just helps to give it a really cohesive look across the entire thing. And in that adjustment layer, I usually add actually a lot of this contrast because I want them to all have the same amount. So I'm gonna turn this off of here really fast so you can just see um, what I have in the adjustment layer. So in that adjustment layer, I normally, that's where I'm adding my contrast, adding my black, and I'm also gonna be boosting my, my whites. Pretty much all the things that we just did. Uh, and I also, it's, this is here where I add my sharpening. I'm gonna maybe bump this up to 10. And my saturation here, I have it at 105. One, anywhere between 102, 105 is usually pretty good. So this is kind of what I'm applying um, across the board. And I'm also raising uh, the faded film up to around 50%. And that helps the whole thing, Ellie talked about before, to look just a little bit more like film. So if you take this, which I lay across the entire thing, and you combine it with what I did over here, uh, here it looks like too much. What I'm just gonna do is I'm going to remove uh, this and this and this since we already kind of added that in. And this one actually might just need a teeny bit here. So that's probably where I would end up for the that overall. So you can see here without the adjustment layer and with the adjustment layer and yeah, so that's just kind of my process for what I do for a good natural light situation on a wedding. All right, so in that last example, we showed you a really good lighting situation and how to take it from good to great. Now I'm gonna show you how to take a really bad lighting situation and make it look good. So this is um, a shot obviously during the reception of the best man giving his speech. And as you can see, our white balance was just off. Um, for whatever reason, we just had the settings wrong and it is way too warm and it just kind of looks gross. So I'm gonna kind of show you what I would do to save this and to try and get it looking pretty much what I would consider like acceptable. It's never gonna look amazing. It's never gonna look as good as the last example with you know the perfect golden hour light, but we can definitely make it look a lot better than this. So uh, the first thing I'm just gonna do, so this is completely raw. This is straight out of camera. So I'm just gonna put the adjustment layer on just so I can kind of see uh, what I'm working with. And this is the same adjustment layer that we had before with all the same kinds of settings in there. So we're gonna go into this and we're gonna try and uh, see if we can save it. So the first thing I like to do to try and save it, we talked about was just use, using this white balance thing and see if we can get close. Sometimes you can, sometimes you can't. So, all right, so with the white balance selector, it's taking my temperature all the way down as low as it'll possibly go. And it's still, it's, I mean, it's, that's better, uh, but it's still not looking great. So for this, I think we're gonna bump our exposure up, um, not by that much, oh, that's a lot. We're gonna go up by a little bit, uh, 0.2, let's try 0.3. Okay, that looks good. Um, now I think this looks a little bit too cool, so I'm just going to warm it up just a tiny bit to make it look, I mean, it was a warm barn looking thing, um, and even just right there, I mean, that to me looks, I mean, it's so much better than what we had before, so if we toggle that on and off, we're already getting close there, so again, we can kind of play with this slider here a little bit, add a little more magenta, I think that looks pretty good. From here, I'd probably leave this, like I'd be content with this. If we really wanted to tweak it even further, we could kind of come in here and we could maybe pull out some of the reds from this red channel just to make it a little less um, like orangey. Um, let's see, we can if we pull out some green. Some of this, again, we've talked about is just sort of messing around. And uh, we'll reset that, I think that looks fine. And then with blue, can add a little bit of blue back in there. So just between those little teeny tiny changes, obviously with the white balance selector, um, you know, pushing it pretty far, you know, like negative 91, that's about as far as you can push it. Um, you know, this to me looks a lot better. It doesn't look fantastic and it's never gonna be perfect, but I think that's definitely a heck of a lot better than that. So uh, with just those few little tweaks right here in this basic color correction, um, we can get it looking pretty good. And then all I do, so it would be that, and then with the adjustment layer, it goes from that to that. So that's pretty much what I would do for this type of a, of a shot on a wedding day. 
And one thing I wanted to just uh, hit on really quickly is the advantage of doing this adjustment layer is that it makes it so that you don't necessarily have to tweak every single thing. So basically once I finish the edit, I get to the very end, I'll go back to the beginning and I'm going through and I'm really just looking for any major changes as far as white balance that's off or something that's either overexposed or underexposed and making those changes on the actual clip itself. Everything else I'm pretty much controlling with this adjustment layer as far as the contrast and the poppiness and all that kind of stuff. And again, that makes it so it's just really cohesive, but it also saves you time so you're not applying contrast and your blacks and your whites and your sharpness and all that kind of stuff to every single clip. So I do anything that's gonna be general like that that I'm gonna use pretty much on everything up here in the adjustment layer. And then I'm only tweaking just small little minor changes down here on the actual clips themselves in the timeline. And to be honest with you, with the wide DR on the C100, not nine times out of 10, maybe eight times out of 10, I can just leave it. You know, my, my goal is always to get it as correct in camera as possible. So if I'm able to get it pretty correct and correct in camera, so if I'm able to get it pretty correct in camera, uh, my goal would be so I don't have to do a ton of extra work as I get in here. Um, you know, this shot of the bride here is a good example. Um, over in Lumetri Color, you can see all I did was I cooled it down just a teeny little bit and um, raised the shadows just to open it up a tiny bit. But that's it. Like that's literally all that I'm doing. And then everything else is coming from the adjustment layer to give it that more filmy kind of look. So um, hopefully that helps you guys have a better understanding of my workflow and just sort of the process that I do for color grading these clips in Lumetri here. Hopefully you guys found this helpful. If you did, please go ahead and leave a comment down below if you have any questions, anything like that. I realize that there's a million ways to do this and there's not necessarily one right or wrong way to do color grading and to use the Lumetri color panel. So this is kind of just my way, my process. So if you have a different way that you think would be better or just you'd like to comment, please leave that below. I love uh, hearing from you guys and all that kind of stuff. And yeah, this has been Todd from the Harringtons and I'll catch you in the next one.